You'll be coming through. You'll find it. Sixth book in the Bible, Old Testament. And uh, I cannot tell you what excitement I have as I have been preparing the message for this hour. And I come before you this morning encouraged. I also come before you concerned. I also come before you as a human being and a friend and as a pastor because I come to you today to not gloss over the fact, not just try to fill in a gap and move on, but I come to you today because we gather together as a family. And part of the healing of a family is, is that we can indeed recognize that a great, and I use that term not to gloss, but to mean it genuineness, we have seen heaven receive a great soldier for the Lord. Can I hear an amen? And I'm not going to just not recognize that. We have seen a great soldier be received this past week by the Lord. But as a pastor, I must come before you as I have concerns, as you do as well, and there's an old country song sung by the possum that ask and poses the question, is, which is today's title of the message if you're a note taker, who's going who's gonna to fill those shoes? Who's going to fill those shoes? And folks, those was big shoes to fill, but who's going to fill those shoes? So at the end of this all, first of all, get your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and then my challenge to you here today is to be serious and ask you the question, who's going to fill these shoes? Now some of you all may be trying to sing another song, not by the possum, but by CCR, which is, it ain't me, it ain't me. Well folks, I want to challenge you with a gospel song by the Gaithers. But if you want to look it up, it's a dandy. And it says, let it start with me. Yes. You may be saying, oh, you've got the wrong one. I came on the wrong day. No, you came on the right day. You're in the right place. And it is exactly you who I'm speaking to. You say, why are you looking at me? I am. You're saying that you must be looking at somebody else. It's the Holy Spirit who's going to be working on you today in the conviction. I'm challenging you and I'm asking you to step up and fill those shoes. I could end the message right here, but we've got Joshua to read. Whenever these things and transitionings and tr uh, everything taking place, I have thought diligently about this within God's valiant soldier going on to be in heaven and going on to be with the Lord. I realize that Moses went on to be with the in paradise, but now we have direct access into heaven because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And I, I thought about these things and, and thinking about the book of Joshua and where the church is today. It's a mirror image of us having the same opportunity to pick up the baton, to go forward, or to become stagnant and stay on this side and never want to move forward. So I want to move forward with this. Joshua chapter 1. And we may camp here for a few weeks because I'm intrigued with the message of Joshua. You see, the first five books of the Bible were written by Moses. They're called the Pentateuch. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and then Deuteronomy. But it's as though you just turn the page and yet Joshua picks up the pen and begins to write the next adventure that is set before us. I, I want you to tune in to this great adventure as I'm going to break it down into three points this morning. The first of the three points we will find is in Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. So what do we do, church? My first point for you this morning is, is we've got to set up a plan. And maybe you're here this morning and you're saying, I need to set up a plan. I, I don't have a plan in my life. I, I need to have a plan. I need to have a purpose. What is my direction? Where do I go from here? I want to help you folks. I really do. I want to see you go to the next level. I want to see you go to that next chapter. I want to see you make that crossing over. So this setting up a plan is this. 
not only for your own life, but I'm looking at it as this church, and I see this great church as a great vessel that can move together and move in a mighty way. And I'm challenging folks, who's going to pick up the baton? Who's going to pick up the flag whenever the flag falls? And that's one of the things on the battlefield. Whenever the flag holder is carrying out there and marching forward, whenever the flag drops, the next one that comes along in line picks that flag up and keeps marching on. I'm looking for some Joshua's this morning. Maybe you're a Joshua. I don't know, but I'm looking for some Joshua hearts and mindsets that says, let it start with me. I don't know what. I don't know where, but I'm willing to get a plan together. And we're going to do this. We're going to pick this up because we're family, and that's what we do. So let's set up a plan. Let's look at what the Word was here in verses 1 through 6 in Joshua. For our first point. For the first thing God says here is, Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses ministering, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given to you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. Now listen to this in verse 5. Therefore shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of the life as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Check this out, verse 6. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Folks, I don't know what stage you are in your life. I don't know what stage you are in your ministry and in your walk with the Lord and within your... Uh, willingness to serve within the church, but I want to challenge you this. Write down a plan. Have a plan for your life. Why? Why do we need to set up that plan? Because we need to not just have a plan of importance, but we need to make sure that we have a plan that is a God plan. Many times we try to tell God what our plans are and say, Lord, bless my plans. No, I want to bless the plan, His plans of what He's got willing for us to do and always be willing to do the will of God, the way of God. And if we would surrender ourselves to His plan, you'll find out your plans will be a whole lot better off. Get in tune with Him. Look what He says here. When we learn to make plans, when we have a plan moving forward, I want you to note that when we have a plan moving forward, you're not going to just live passively. And unfortunately, it seems like this past year, it's been a wait and see kind of year. Well, let's just wait and see what's going to come up. Uh, let's just wait and, and before we move forward. Let's just not get ahead of ourselves too much. I've heard that till I'm tired of hearing it. I have a plan, and the plan is, is God's plan, and the will of God, the way of God, and we're going to move the way of God, and we've been doing that, and I know that we've been navigating according what I believe the way God would have us to navigate and moving, but we've got to be in preparation. Look again at verse 11 here. Now, we've not gotten to it, but I want you to see the key here is conclusion in verse 11, and it says, And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did uh, there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God is He, God in heaven above and earth beneath. You see, we've got to be planning ahead to meet our Heavenly Maker. We've got to be planning ahead for others to meet our Heavenly Maker. Now He knew. God knew. And He had a plan. And we know that in verse 11... I'm sorry, I went to chapter 2 when I flipped the page. This new Bible is getting me. Look at verse 11. It says, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare ye, or prepare you, victuals, for within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan, and to go to the, possess the land 
which the Lord your God giveth you to possess. Prepare. Prepare you victuals. That means you need to prepare supplies. We need to be making ready. Get your stuff in order. Get everything, get all your stuff ready to go and move forward. If we want to have a plan, we need to make sure it's God's plan. And I love the words of Hannibal from the A-Team. He says, I love it when a plan comes together. But unfortunately, and I know many within the earshot of my voice don't have a plan in life. How do I know that? Well, statistics will tell you this. A survey done a little while back discovered that 27% of all people in America never give, have given any thought at all to the future. And those that have given, 60% of people might give some plans in regards to finances and financials. I think you should give some plans to financials moving forward. But also, 10% have given serious thought to the future. Only 10% out of 100 have given serious thought to the future about what you're going to do in the days ahead, where you're going to be next week, where Oklahoma is going to be in one year, where we hope to be in three years, where we hope to be in five years. As a visionary, I have a vision, and I want to see us doing God's will, God's way, and in God's timetable. Because in here, some people will say, well, I think we're moving too fast. And others will say, I think we're going too slow. Folks, I think that we would all agree that we must be moving at the pace God wants us to move. Can I hear an amen to that? And let's get on that page and the rest of it will fall in order. We need to be considerate of God's will. Only 60% give account of finances. 10% think about being uh, thinking about the future and they're called the high achievers. However, only 3% of the population has written down goals. And they are called the super achievers. Three out of every hundred write down their goals and they are the super achievers. And within those written goals, many that will go on to success set up a plan and they get ready because they take time to think about where they will invest their time, energy, and efforts in this life. So let me ask you a question. What's your plans? If you're sitting here saying, I don't have any. I, this message is for you. What is your plans? Or are you just drifting through life? Or you're just waiting on somebody to instruct you or to tell you what to do next? Folks, God's Word will instruct us and tell us what to do next. And I want to challenge you because we have an opportunity in this church for Joshua's to step up. You see, what it started here in verse 1 and 2 is, is that Moses... Moses was the man of God, serving God, following God's will. Moses had a plan, and he was carrying out God's plan. But as Moses had a plan, he knew that his time would come and God took him on home. In fact, we do not know where Moses was buried at because we didn't want to make Moses a god. And as he come out of uh, Egypt and so forth, we realized that he went up onto the mount and he died and he was no more. And yet, right after that, a Joshua has to step up to carry the banner. And folks, we know that there has been many a Moses in our life, a God-fearing individual, somebody who has stepped up and has went on. It may have been a grandpa. It may have been a, a family member. It may have been a church member. But many of Moses has gone on, and yet we need Joshua's to step up and to step into those roles. So one of the ways that you can do this is preparing for the future is remembering your past. And if you think about what has been influenced you in the past, you must let it be used to propel you for the future. Here it says Moses was dead. But you are not. You're here. And we need you. And I could give a compelling tear. I could give a compelling yell and say, come. But the bottom line is, is you must listen to the Holy Spirit as He is beckoning you. We need Joshua's to step up. If not, we too will be dead and there will be not a generation to pass on to the baton to or a generation. We must be ready to do the will of God. We should never forget our past and we should always be moving forward because if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. I've often said that statement. Proverbs 20 and 18 says, Every purpose is established by counsel and with good advice make war. Our war is not against each other. Our war is not against other churches or other denominations. Our war is against the devil and the enemies and the demons that are trying to steal, kill, and destroy. We must be uh, vigilant 
about this thing called life and about this work that we're called to do in the Christian life. Now this leads me to the second point, and how are we going to know the plan? First of all, we've got to establish, we've got to set up a plan. And secondly, what is the plan? The plan's right here in this book. And you must stay in God's Word. You've got to get into God's words. It is the B-I-B-L-E. It is the basic instructions before leaving earth. We must get into God's manual. Look again here at verses 7 through 9. The Bible says, Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. What's the law? This is the book. It's God's Word. Which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of, my, out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and thou, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Folks, when I look at this, you want to have a plan. You need to make sure that your plan is following the Word of God. And I have a plan. I set up a plan every year to follow that Word of God. And it's reading through the Bible. Yes, we have read through the New Testament one year. We may read through the Old Testament next year. It's 66 books. And, and, and I challenge you to get a plan and to follow the plan of the reading of the Word of God. Every one of you that picked up a bulletin, you should have a plan inside of that. And you may not have started reading through the Bible this year in January, but you can start it right now at the end of June, and you can pick right up and pace right now going through the book of Job. Some of you thought it said Job and you didn't want to read it. No, I'm telling you, it's the book of Job. And I say this, and I say this in love, you need to get an accountability person that will help you and that will read along with you. And you say, well, you're a preacher. You're supposed to read the Bible. You're a preacher. You're supposed to read the Bible every year. Guess what, folks? You're a Christian. And you're supposed to read the Bible too. Can I hear an amen? amen. Not just me and have me read it to you or tell it to you on Sundays and Wednesdays. We need to step up and be willing to read the Bible every day. You say, well, I listen to a devotion or I hear this podcast. That's not what I'm saying. You must read the Bible. And I need some Joshua's. And I'm asking my church family and my friends to hold me accountable. I am humbled and I don't mean to embarrass at any time, but I am so blessed that Sandra is here today. She knew what I was preaching on. And she knows, and I'm not trying to preach a funeral twice, but his words will and his friendship will live on a lifetime within me. Roy was my accountability reading partner. We would read. The best we could, I know his eyesight got in bad here at the end, but I'm telling you on years on end. We would read together. And I know that he would read. We would read the chapters. He followed the Bible chart. He asked for the Bible charts. He wanted to read the Bible charts and follow along. And you know what? It's not just because I'm a preacher, because he was a deacon. It's because we are Christians and we want to learn about God. That's why I'm still studying. That's why I still learn. I want to learn everything I can about God. But you know what I need? I don't need a Joshua. I need all Joshua's. And I'm asking you, let's bond together. Get an accountability partner. Get somebody else along with you. Let's hold each other accountable. And let's read through the Bible together. Let's dig into the Bible together. I can't pronounce every Old Testament name either. And neither can you. But we can dig into it. And we can read and see what God's Word has to say to us. When do I need to start and where do I need to start? Right now, today. There's a daily plan. And I'm challenging you. Be a Joshua. You need a plan? It's right there. I, I, I printed it out for you. Let's read the Word of God together. Now, having guidance, it is essential. And guidance from other Christians is wise counsel. And having that plan together of how we're going to navigate, how we're going to move forward. Because in verse 7 it says, God says to Joshua, read the laws 
of God's Word and don't stray from it. There's a lot of things that want to pull our eyes and there's a lot of things we'll give attention to other than the Word of God. But we must stay in the Word of God. It reminds me of the hunter that went out and got a brand new hunting dog and he wanted this hunting dog for the purpose of hunting bear. Bear's gotten really populated now and he wanted to hunt bear with it. So he got this hunting dog and he took the hunting dog out and he says, okay, hunting dog, let's see what you got. We're going out with the plan and we're going to start after a bear. Then hunting dog took off and he got on the trail of a bear and along... Uh, that runner or that hunter coming after that dog, chasing after him as he's going on that bear trial, uh, bear trail, and he was going to catch that bear. All of a sudden, he came across where a deer had crossed across the path of the bear. So that dog got the whip of that deer and he took off on this direction instead of going after the bear. And as he stuck up, took off and he started running across that one, well, then there was a raccoon that crossed the path of the deer. And he took off after the raccoon. And then after he, the, the hunter still trying to follow along after that, there was a rabbit that went across from the raccoon. So he took off after a rabbit. And then after he ran off to the rabbit, when the hunter finally caught up with that hunting dog, he was there digging in the ground after a field mouse. Now folks, that's what we call a rabbi trail. And many times we set out with good intentions that after going out after something big, but we settle for something so much less. There is nothing less than the Word of God and the Bible and doing God's work. And so many times we set out with good intentions, but if you don't have a plan, you will not succeed. And my hope and goal is to challenge you, to cheer you on. We must be vigilant and, and, and going out and being servants for Christ and stay in God's Word. So set up a plan, get into the Bible, and follow Him. What are some people who, that they start out good, but they simply just go astray? I've gotten a new Bible and I'm getting used to it and so forth, but it's been said to me, somebody who has a Bible that's falling apart is normally somebody who has a life that's it, that isn't. If your Bible's, if you find somebody who has a Bible that's falling apart, their life probably isn't. And I want you to know that we must dig into the Word of God because this book will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from this book. And that's as plain as can be. This book will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from this book. <laughs> And it shouldn't have to be that a pastor gets up and encourages somebody to just read about the God that we serve. But it's the place and point that where we are at today. And I know many in this room do. But maybe you're saying, I'm too busy to study the Bible. Joshua was leading a couple of million people, and yet he made time to stay in God's Word. We cannot veer from the Word of God. Now let me tell you this. First of all, you've got to set up a plan. You've got to stay in God's Word. But it's not just enough because many of you all have been reading the Bible longer than I've been alive. And we must take God's Word and we must step up in faith. And we must be willing to pick up this baton. You say, I don't know. I'm not a very good teacher. I don't think that I could do that. I don't think that I could lead in this area. If you have got all this knowledge and you have studied it for years, you must be preparing to pass it on to a Joshua. Many of you all have heard this illustration before many a time. Why is the Dead Sea dead? Why is the Dead Sea dead? I've been to the Dead Sea. I've went out into the Dead Sea. I got burned up in the Dead Sea. Uh, you say, how so? They said don't shave before you get in it because of the salt and the contents and the minerals and all this other stuff. There is so much salt all around the banks of it. It is filled with vitamins and nutrients and oily feeling. In fact, it's so buoyant. It's so thick. It, it, it's almost like transmission fluid. That it's so buoyant that you can't sink. And you say, you don't know me. No, you don't know the Dead Sea. You can't sink in the Dead Sea. When you go out, all of a sudden I felt my feet starting to come up. And I started to float. You can float in the Dead Sea. How is that? Why is that? It is so full of minerals. They make all kinds of soaps and creams and all this stuff saying it has some healing powers and all this stuff. Any kind of market that they can do with it. It has all these rivers from the Jordan River and everything and all these other little rivers that flow into it and everything flows and all those vitamins and all those nutrients and all that nutrition, everything flows and collects there from the Sea of Galilee all the way down to the Jordan to the Dead Sea. It is so full of vitamins and nutrients and everything and it is so full but nothing can grow in it. You won't find a fish. You won't find a crocodile. 
You won't find plants. You won't find anything living in the Dead Sea. And you say, why is that? Why can nothing live in the Dead Sea? You could cast a line out there all day long, but you're not going to catch nothing unless your name's Dustin Bishop. I've never seen a man that could catch a fish like he can. He can. He definitely can. I don't normally use you, but I did on the... If there's a fish in the Dead Sea, you could catch it. But friends, there's not a fish in the Dead Sea. And I'll tell you why. It's so full of minerals and so full of nutrients. But do you know why the Dead Sea's dead? Because it doesn't have an outlet. Everything collects in it. It's so full of minerals and nutrients and so forth. But it is so full that it doesn't pour into anything else. And folks, we will be no better than Dead Seas ourselves if we don't pour out into other people that which we have learned and studied and, and memorized and scripture memorization and going out in grow teams and serving in whatever capacity we can and serving and using our gifts and our talents and investing in other people. And I'm going to tell you what, uh, we must be perforated that we would pour everything that we have gained and learned into this into other people and having that plan of stepping out in faith God told Joshua, Joshua three times, step out in faith and be strong and courageous. He told him three times, I know you're scared. You don't think you can do it. But I have equipped you with what I needed you to be equipped with. I'll give you what you need. Just step out in faith and whenever you step out in faith, I'll give you more. And whenever you do that, I'll give you, I'll give you what you need to sustain you and fill you with the next step. And the next step, there's two things though that the devil will throw against you when you try to step out in faith. And that's called fear and discouragement. And right now, I know that some of us, we face fear, and you may even let fear become discouragement. And both of these are tools that the devil will try to use so that you'll miss out on what God has for you in the future. Don't be afraid. Courage is not the absence of fear, but the ability to move ahead in spite of your fear. Am I fearful? Not in the sense that I'm afraid of anything. And never mistake my confidence for arrogance, but my confidence is in none other than the Christ that has, didn't bring us this far to leave us now. And it's at that now moment that while Moses had passed, Joshua was here. And I look at Joshua's, and we must move forward, and we can do this, and we need to step up in faith. So where do we go to from here? Where do we go at this point? I have other illustrations, but my point I want you to take. What's the plan? My plan today is to beckon you as Joshua did all those people to step up. Step up and have a plan. And that plan is, is we need Joshua to fill the void. I need people to fill the void within this church. You need people to fill the voids within this church. Step up and you say, I don't know what I can do, but I'm willing to step up. If you'll step up, God will meet you and greet you and say, you are the Joshua that I was calling. Maybe everybody else will say, you're not the Joshua. Maybe you're listening to the lie of the devil and the discouragement. Listen, Roosevelt said these words, often discouragement comes from others around us who tell us we will fail or remind us of our past weaknesses. He said that this about discouragement. It is not the critic who counts. Not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles. Or where the doers of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena. Who face, whose face is marred by the dust and the sweat and the blood. Who strives valiantly. Who errs and comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcomings. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows with the great enthusiasm and the great devotions? Who spends himself in worthy causes? Who at the best knows in the end is triumph of high achievement? And who at worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly? So that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. I challenge you to be a Joshua and I challenge you to step up. How? Get a plan. Get into God's Word. Pray about it. And then step out in faith. This morning. Would you stand with me all over this church house? It's a very simple message. And my question... 
And I'm not delaying. Who's going to fill these shoes? Who will step up to the plate? Who will be willing to say, I'm not going to be a dead seed, but I'm going to be used for God and His glory? We need you. God needs you. Why? So that we can enter into the promised land, but not that we would just be the only ones to enter into the promised land, but so many others that we've come in contact with would be willing and able to go into the promised land with us. I pray that their names would be recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. And not only this, I believe that there will be rewards in heaven. And I want to hear those words, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. We have a great leader who's went on to hear those words. And we have a great opportunity to hear those words also. I challenge you this morning. You say, I don't know. It ain't me. It ain't me. But I say, let it start with me. Let it start with you. God wants to bless. I don't have a doubt in my mind. You're saying, you know what God wants? Yes, I do. God wants to bless His church. God wants to bless His people. And God wants to see you move in a mighty way for His glory. The opportunity is now. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation. But please, don't delay. Step up and step out and be a Joshua.